The world's first car magazine, Autocar, defined supercars as super fast, sporty handling, and only a limited number of manufactured vehicles. How would it be if they had these supercars run on public roads? Let's find out the practicality of the Uracon STO on public roads. For the front, due to its aerodynamic qualities, you see enhanced features, especially with the air ducts. Here on the front with the nose, and here on the side with the carbon fibers, and at the back on the center as well. So these are features that enhances the aerodynamic aspects of the car and you actually see that in the performance. The overall size and the weight of the car is only 1,339 kilograms, if you can believe it. And you have 75% of the entire body in carbon fiber. And even with the front part as here, you have the air intake in order to enhance the aerodynamic abilities as well. Now let's go over to the side profile. You see the very distinct racing tires as well as the wheels on the Lamborghini. And as you see uh, from the side, you also see another line of air ducts in order for aerodynamic abilities. And as you go along the side, you also see some more air ducts. And at the back, you see the spoilers attached as well. These spoilers are adjustable. Once again, this is for the heightened performance. And as you go along the side of uh, the profile, you see the shark fin detail, which is also an addition to the new STO design. This is probably one of the favorite design features of the Uracan STO for my personal preference. This is um, kind of a scene a steal a stealer. And even if you're sitting in the driver's seat, if you look in the room mirror, this is exactly what you see from the inside view. That, as well as the adjustable spoilers, are what actually steal the show for me. So what I can say is it's not an easy car to get into. It's very low standing. And so trying to kind of get into the car is definitely not that easy but once you're inside it's quite cozy and it kind of is one of those cars that gives you a hug when you're inside these are bucket sheets real live bucket sheets that you would see in one of those racing cars as for myself because i ride in a car that has very similar type seats so i was quite used to it but for those of you who might not be used to bucket type seats, might feel that they are way too rigid and too hard. Because the Uracan STO is in fact a car that was brought from the racetracks out onto the public roads. You do have a very narrow but wide line of sight. The materials that used inside are definitely top notch, very luxurious, all carbon fiber and Alcantara. So you will feel that it is very high end. The designs are very Italian, if you know what I'm saying. They're very flamboyant. They're very flashy. It's very Lamborghini. The colors as well as the mixture of materials are, it screams Lamborghini. However, you do have the options of customizing the interior designs of Lamborghini because it is a high-end car. You won't probably want the exact same designs when you're opting for a Lamborghini. So uh, for the stitching, for the colors inside, you will probably want to customize your own. For the blinker, you have a knob here, left or right. So this is what's different on this car. And then you also have the shift paddles on both sides. 
as you may have guessed, there is very limited storage space inside the car. Right now, I have one bag with me, which I have stored, by the way, behind my seat right now. So I brought this bag. I didn't really know where to store it, so I put it behind my seat. That's where you can put it, one thing. And another place you can put it is behind the passenger seat. That's another place. One more place that I have found is actually underneath the place where you can actually put in maybe your keys. So there is no room for you to put in um, your coffee or your water bottle. So that's that. There is a glove box, but it's also very small. And that's about it for the sun visor because uh, that's about half the size of any other sun visor in your sedan or your SUV. And with this key, you can open up the only trunk that there is, which houses enough room for your helmet. And I can't even do the Mari trunk test. However, even if we can't do the Mari trunk test, the real value of the Uracan STO is not the Mari trunk test, but the fast driving performance. So let's take it out for a drive. It's actually a beautiful ride. And definitely this car was not meant to drive slow. You can really feel that the car is bursting with energy, especially when you step on the gas and um, when you're on winding roads, it's screaming for you to really have fun with it. It's super stable on the winding courses and you can really have fun with it. I'm loving this V10 naturally aspirated engine. It's very rare these days. Uh, one of these supercars is going to go into a extinct and the beauty of the supercar is uh, the power and the energy. Even if it is exploding with power and it can go up and down and very stable on the corners, but you still feel that it's a driver's car. It doesn't let you get completely out of control, but then again, it lets you have fun out on the road. You look at the car and you definitely think that, oh, it's going to be extremely uncomfortable because it's going to read every little pebble on the ground. It's not as bad as you expect. Of course, because it's a sports car, but it's not that bad. Um, if you consider all the other sports cars or low center of gravity cars, it's actually better than my car. Considering this is a very lightweight car, not that much insulation is on the car. You do have a lot of noise, the wind noise, uh, the noise coming from the vibration on the ground, um, all of the noise that's red from the tires coming up into the car. And because it's a V10, a naturally aspirated engine, to some extent, you do want to hear the noise of the engine. So you do feel and hear a lot of that noise when you're driving. You hear everything that's going on outside. Driving in heavy traffic definitely it was not meant for this car. It feels like a very heavy car when uh, you're driving with the Lamborghini Huracan STO in heavy traffic. But however, Lamborghini has tried to compromise with a lot of different features and functions within the car to adjust to the daily lifestyle. They have put in this function of lifting up the car because it's such a low stance car. You might scratch the bottom of the car so much. That's why it lifts it up um, when you're traveling at speeds lower than 80 kilometers per hour. 
that's especially important for Korean city roads because it's so bumpy. It has a lot of bumps and potholes and all of those places where it might hurt the car. So this is the first time that I've actually ridden a supercar out on the public roads. So it's a bit surreal. I was surprised, however, the seats were not electronically controlled. In order to minimize uh, the weight of the car, they probably did not want to add on some of the electronic components. Another thing that did surprise me was uh, the fact that it was more comfortable than I had imagined. Um, I would have thought that it would be completely rigid and the seating arrangement alone would cause the car to be very uncomfortable and the drive would be uncomfortable as well. But overall, it wasn't that bad. It was just as any other sports car would be and no less. driven this Huracan STO for a couple of hours today. I think the biggest benefit of this model is it's much more comfortable than a race car. It doesn't have a roll cage in it. It does work as a daily car. Of course, it does have its um, small difficulties and challenges, but it's not a race car as what you would think um, out on the circuit. It works. So I think that that's the biggest advantage of what you would think of um, from the Oricon STO.